Let's review hip subluxation in a patient with cerebral palsy. Okay, so here's a question. Spasticity in which muscles can lead to hip dislocation? Adductor longus, iliopsoas, gluteus medius, or the bicep femoris? Well, the answer here is the adductors and hip flexors. So you want to think that when there is spasticity in these muscles, they'll pull the proximal femur into adduction, flexion, and internal rotation, effectively driving that femoral head right out of the hip joint. So spasticity in these muscles are important, but we can also note that the other two muscles, glute med and biceps femoris, are generally going to be weak. Okay, so there also are some bony deformities that are commonly associated with hip dysplasia. Let's go over them. It is femoral antiversion and coxivalgia. With femoral antiversion, we're seeing that the femur is actually twisting inwards. You can see that angle between the femoral neck and the femoral shaft is actually decreasing. This can cause the child's knees and feet to turn inward and have that kind of pigeon-toed effect. Next, if we look at coxivalgia, we can also see that that bony alignment in the hip is going to decrease as they're in this coxivalgia. We're typically looking at degrees over 135 degrees here versus normal is 120 to 130 and coxivalgia occurs under 120 degrees.